I'm Jay Jackson. Welcome to the debut edition of Wine News Noir. We begin with an exclusive update regarding the racial profiling allegations against the manager of the popular Goose and Gander restaurant in Napa Valley. South African musician Jonathan Butler leveled the charges against the eatery's manager in a very public way. Now we know what has changed and what hasn't. It was mid-August, internationally praised singer-songwriter Jonathan Butler just wrapped up a set at the Napa Valley Blue Note Jazz Series at the Charles Krug Winery. He and friends stopped in the famed Goose and Gander restaurant in St. Helena between shows for a bite to eat. But after the meal, Butler says that's when the trouble started. In a near five-minute video he posted to TikTok and Instagram, Butler accused a manager of the restaurant of racially profiling him after questioning him about not leaving a tip. Here's Butler's video in its entirety. Hey guys, I'm here, we are here in the Napa Valley playing at the Blue Note down the street. We just left the restaurant called uh, Goose and Gander. Goose and Gander. And I have to say, We had a great dinner, and um, the bill came, and I paid the bill, and we took care of the waiter, our server. And as we were leaving the restaurant, the manager of the restaurant decided to follow me to my car. And I turned around, and uh, I said, what's the problem? And he asked me this question, did I take care of our server at the restaurant? I've never been followed out of the restaurant in my, in my life. And so he showed so much lack of respect for me and all of us that ate at the restaurant. I don't think he'll do that to a, to a white person, but he did it to me. He felt comfortable to come up to me to tell me that I'm coming to find out if you took care of my server. And so, with that being said, it's offensive, it's highly uh, um, disturbing to me that here in Napa Valley, uh, of all places where there's jazz music and great wines, people from all over the world come here, and this guy decides to follow me to my car to ask me this too. Very well. And I, let me tell you, uh, we took very well care of our server, very well. And we gave them also a lot of money. So I went back into the restaurant and I went to confront him. And he tried to talk his way out of it, um, that he didn't mean to offend me. And I said, you have already offended me. You know, for me just to come back to talk to you means that you've offended me and disrespected who I am as a person. You didn't show me any humanity by coming up to me like this way. This is some kind of, you know, back in the day in South Africa, kind of stuff I used to experience as a black person. I hope this guy, you know, I don't wish him any bad, but we got to get rid of this mindset of people who has this mindset just because of the color of my skin and the way I dress or something that he has to follow me out to my car. So, fellas, this, this was a... Um, it was great up till that point, right? Correct. Yes. It was great right. up till that point. I mean, and, and, and the restaurant came highly recommended to one of my dearest, dearest friends. So I'm really kind of pissed off that he would even <laughs> insult my friend who recommended this great restaurant with this amazing food, Goose and Gander. So next time you're a black guy and you're sitting at Goose and Gander, make sure he's not gonna call you out. To ask you whether you paid to taking care of his server. He didn't have any explanation. He, he didn't. He didn't know what to say to me. He um, he got tongue tied in the end. And then the server came and gave me a hug and shook my hand. And I'm like, you know. And I'm about to do another show right now. I'm about to go on stage at the Blue Note Jazz Festival here. So you know, when we see something, you know, each one teach one so when you see something like this happen to someone speak up you know what I'm saying talk about it have a conversation about it you know I'm black he's Asian we both human beings what what is he trying to prove 
I just gave him my, my American Express card. I mean, what is he trying to prove? You know? This has got to stop, man. You know? This has got to stop. After the video went viral around the world, the Goose and Gander issued an apology and placed the manager on leave. Now, a month and a half later, in a Wine News Noir exclusive, owner Andy Florsham provided an update after we sent him a list of questions via the restaurant's website. Question number one. Is the manager who allegedly profiled Mr. Butler still working for you? Answer, yes. The manager who was involved in the incident is still working for us and has completed sensitivity training. Nevertheless, this is an ongoing process and everyone at the Goose and Gander is continuing to do the work in order to provide the best hospitality possible for each and every one of our guests. Question number two. If so, has the sensitivity training you said you'd carried out been completed? Answer. Much of the training has been completed, but not all. This is a long process, and we have made the decision to try and do this right as opposed to as quickly as possible. Our entire staff is involved with this process, and things are going well. It's been a challenging experience for all of us, Mr. Butler and our employees included, but we believe that it happened for a reason and are using it as an opportunity to make positive change. Question number three, is the training only for the gentleman or is it for the entire staff? Answer, see above. As for Butler, Wine News Noir reached out to his team but got no response. He has gone on record saying he doesn't want the manager fired, as you heard in the video, also saying in a joint statement with Goose and Gander that he accepts their apology. A new national study is shedding light on the path to make wine more diverse and inclusive. The study suggests winemakers need to change with the changing demographics of America, in particular, Hispanic and African-American consumers. The study suggests more diverse advertising, culturally sensitive labeling, job training, and multicultural food pairing standards are among the biggest concerns of Black and Hispanic wine drinkers. This is part two of a study that first started with the metadata of inclusion in the wine industry. The study was conducted by the Wine Market Council and the research firm Ethnofax LLC. Inglewood, California's 1010 Wine and Events is celebrating a year of success and they had a week-long party doing it. I visited the wine bar on the final day of their celebration. Five course meal, five different wines, one celebrity chef and one international wine rock star. That adds up to one unforgettable night at 1010 Wine and Events in Inglewood as they wrap up their week-long one-year anniversary celebration. Co-owner Leanne Jones is overjoyed. This is the last event of the one-year anniversary. It's been a, a crazy, complete week, but we are only able to do it because of our staff, because of our chefs, and because of the community, and so we're so grateful. First of all, thank you guys for so much from the bottom of my heart for coming out tonight, for spending your money on me, for spending your Sunday with me. I sincerely Celebrity chef and social media star Seth Brundo prepared the meals, or more like works of art. He told fans he owes a lot of it to COVID. The outside world was closed, and you know, besides my wife and child, I had nothing else to do but to lock myself inside and to really get in touch with my craft. Over the years, I put myself into wine school. In the world of wine, Tanache Nyamudoko is a legend. Zimbabwe born with little wine experience, he has turned the world's eye towards black winemakers in South Africa and beyond with his Kamusha wines, wines that are wildly popular and are prepared with the meals for tonight's celebration. She is, uh, I kind of feel the wines is my rock star, but if I play second fiddle, that's still a compliment, man. <laughs> yeah, I think my wine is all about embracing my culture, which is the African culture, embracing my food, embracing our language or society and you know just wine is a natural beverage which has been eurocentric uh, afrophonic but we're bringing the african culture to it as well as for attendees it's clear a good time was had by all for megan lawson good time is an understatement tonight was so great like honestly just being in a room with just lovely people the vibe was great, the wine pairings were amazing. So grateful to Kamusha for him coming through and showing his wine. I was having this great dinner with his pairing. 
music, everything. So, yes, this is the wrap of the one year anniversary. On the two years, this is crazy. <laughs> It's been a busy harvest season for African-American winemakers as the demand for Black-owned wine increases. So does the work. Here's a look at some of the action in vineyards and wineries. For one winemaker, harvest means party time. Theopolis Vineyards was recently voted one of the 13 best wineries in America. Now it's time to celebrate. Amid majestic redwoods and pristine vineyards in this picturesque land two hours north of San Francisco, about a hundred African-American wine lovers make the trek here once a year to do one thing, party. The Theopolis Vineyards Harvest and Bottle Release Party has become the must-attend harvest event in the black wine community. I'm not going to tell you all the secrets that's in the book. And this year, the, the godmother of all African-American winemakers, Iris Badeau, held court discussing her book, From White to Black and how she became the first African-American female winemaker in America. And I want black women, especially women, young women, to know that they can do whatever they want to do. The wine business is not an easy business. It's labor intensive and capital intensive. And it requires a lot of determination and drive. And I want to inspire them to do that, to have that ability and to know that they can. With Texas barbecue and endless wine on hand, party goers drank, dined, and danced until dusk. Happy birthday, dear Iris. Theopolis owner Theodora Lee puts on the exclusive party to celebrate the wine, the vines, and to have a good time. We just bottled over a thousand cases of wine. I want people to taste it and enjoy it and have a good time. I love live music. So Althea Battle and the Platinum Status Band has been entertaining us, dancing, having a good time. Life is too short not to celebrate every aspect. So this Theopolis Vineyards Harvest and Bottle Release Party is a joy for me and all of those who love wine. Wine makers, wine sellers, and wine lovers come from all around the country to this event in Yorkville, California. Sean Walker says there's no way she'd miss it. It is really important to support black winemakers, black wineries, black winemakers. Um, and so we're meeting, connecting, sharing. Nothing brings people together like wine. Beautiful people, beautiful food. It's been wonderful. Love it. What's been the best part? People. Straight up. It's just the fellowship of everyone here. Um, and just seeing folks that look like us celebrating her, celebrating the enjoyment of wine, and just celebrating each other. That's what I'm here for. Describe it all in one word. 
memorable. At the end of the day, it was a family affair, and the legend, Rideau, summed up the day when I asked her this question. Are you having a good time today? Are you serious? <laughs> How can you not have a good time around black folks? Are you kidding? <laughs> I mean, there's so much energy here. There's so much laughter and humor and camaraderie. And we just belong together. This is a return to the party after COVID shut it down over the past two years. It had been held every year from 2014 to 2019. And that's going to do it for this episode of Wine News Noir. Make sure you subscribe to our website and our social media accounts to keep up with the latest news. Also click on the story links for lots more news in the African-American wine community. Thank you for watching Wine News Noir. I'm Jay Jackson. Cheers.